So in this video, we're going to be talking about the temperate biomes. And like usual, you don't, I don't expect you to know too much detail about what the biomes are actually like, what kind of plants live there, what kind of animals live there. But I do expect you to understand the patterns that lead to these biomes being different from other ones. This one is super cool. It's called a temperate broadleaf forest or also called deciduous forest. And before I continue, let me talk about that word, deciduous. Deciduous is a word that basically means a trees that lose their leaves during certain months of the year. So deciduous forests are going to be those forests that, you know, go through fall. You know, literally the fall or the during the autumn part of the year, the leaves, these broad leaves, which are typical, will first change color like you see this beautiful luscious picture over here. The colors of the fall, they call it. And then eventually towards winter, they will fall off and and the plant will pretty much hibernate during the winter and will come back to life during the spring with new new leaves coming all over the place. Now, later in the year, we'll talk about how the, a change in the photosynthetic pigments is responsible for the change in the color of those leaves. But for now, I want you to know this much about these ecosystems. They're temperate ecosystems, which means they're in the middle uh, latitudes, either north or south of the equator. And you notice that they're going to be varying the temperature a lot more than the tropical biomes are, were, were varying. So you see a variation in temperatures during the hotter months of July. It's going to be a lot hotter, warmer than the winter months. But just like the rainforest was for the, for the, the tropical, the, temp, the precipitation is pretty much flat and constant throughout the year. But notice that it's a lot less than it was in the, in the, in the rainforest. And that's because with the rainforest having more heat, there's also more evaporation and then therefore it's wetter. Here, since there's less heat, it's going to be less water in the atmosphere as well and therefore less water. But if the water is pretty much constant throughout the year, that's the kind of biome you're going to get in these areas. So these are going to be humid and temperate areas of the world. Temperate broadleaf forests, also called deciduous forests. Very nice. Now, just like you had a desert on the other one, you have a desert over here as well. So, but in, and by the way, there are temperate deserts or deserts in temperate environments, and there are absolutely no rain on those things. Like the Gobi Desert is a perfect example of it. And, but I didn't really talk about that in this video, but there are temperate deserts. But if it has a little water, at least, so it's not completely dry, but it has a season that is a little more water and then a season with less water, then you're going to get this kind of ecosystem. We call that a chaparral. Now, it's also called a shrubland because you're going to have these short trees. They don't get to grow tall and luscious because it's not going to be very um, wet enough for the trees to do that. Now, these chaparrals will also uh, catch on fire very often because uh, it's so dry. So they have the fire season where, and it's actually important for the ecosystem because fire recycles the, the, the biodiversity and the nutrients in the ecosystem. So fire is a natural process that of the forest uh, like this, the chaparrals or shrublands. Now, sometimes instead of getting the chaparral, depending on the conditions of, or, or the mineral amounts or whatever you get, you're going to get instead very similar abiotic factors, but instead you're getting what is called a temperate woodland. So it's, it's also a little dry compared to uh, the broadleaf forest, but not dry enough that's going to become a desert. So this is a temperate woodland. And unlike the shrubland where you have a lot of these sh uh, small trees, you have tall trees, but they're separated. So it's not like the rainforest or the deciduous forest where the trees are all kind of really on top of each other. The uh, temperate woodlands have very sparse up trees. You see them a lot in the movies like the Sherwood Forest of like, uh, you know, uh, near Nottingham Palace and things like that on Robin Hood uh, is going to be this kind of forest, the temperate uh, forest. And also very susceptible to fires because they're going to be having dry seasons as well. You also have, you also have the savanna of the of these environments which is going to be in between both those extremes just like the on the on the tropical rain, oh, uh, there was a, a grassland here you, again you have the grasslands and this are temperate grasslands now it's very important to know this about temperate grasslands they are the most abundant rich grass producing wheat producing areas of the world these are basically the bread basket of the world now originally these grasslands used to have natural glasses nowadays the majority of the grasslands have been used for cultivation this is the area of the world where most of the food of the world is cultivated you know in both north and south hemispheres it's the area of the world where it's best to grow things like rice and wheat and all those things that feed so many million people notice how the uh, midwest 
rest of the United States is being included in that bunch. And that's in fact the breadbasket of the world. So that's very important about that. But it's also interesting to say that the natural grasslands that used to exist are being replaced by agricultural grasslands, or, which are usually monocultures. We grow one type of grass only in that area, and it's the grasses that we want because we're going to eat them, like wheat and, and rice and other kinds of things like that. So the grasslands have been vastly replaced, and all the organisms that used to live there, things like the buffalo and wild horses, are all having problems surviving, and conservation efforts are being done to try to preserve that as much as possible. But notice that the pattern of this of this one uh, biome is that it's going to be a lot more wet than either the mm -hmm. chaparral or the temper woodland was, but it's going to be varying in wetness compared to the to the boreal uh, to the to deciduous forest. The deciduous forest had pretty much a constant amount. This one instead has, you know, a varying amount of rain and that's what's going to be, make it become a, a, a grassland instead of the, the forest that you saw before. Now there is one more type of temperate uh, forest that sometimes shows up, especially in circumstances where um, there is a, a very low amount of water at some points and then all of a sudden you get a lot more water. Now, this is different from the, the chaparral and temperate woodland because the temperate woodlands and chaparral barely had any water throughout the year. So it's, it was almost desert-like. They had water, but very, very, very little. This one has a season where the water spikes a lot, but the rest of the time it has a very little water. And so the plants have to be adapted for those dry seasons, which usually are the winter months. All right. If you go back to the sh to the chaparral and the uh, temperate woodland, that's another difference between them. You notice that the dry season is going to be doing the summer months. So that's also why you're going to become a, a one forest versus the other. Now, in this type of forest where the dry season happens on the winter months, the the plants have to adapt to that dry season and to the cold at the same time. And the majority of the plants that live in this area are going to be gymnosperms, those coniferous trees. They're like Christmas trees, which make those Christmas cones, right? So that's going to be very, very common in the colder areas of the world uh, where it's also dry during the, the winter months. If it was dry during the summer months, it would probably be a temperate woodland or a shrubland instead. And if it was even drier than that, it would be a, a temperate desert. And if it was really wet, it would have been a deciduous forest. So I hope you understand the difference between the, the, the temperate biomes and understand how differences in temperature and precipitation of each one of those areas will lead to differences in those ecosystems. On the next video, we finish it off talking about the Arctic, polar, and mountainous weather. So I'll see you guys then.